Hello students, welcome again to our biology class this week. As you can see, this week we'll be looking at the topic aquatic habitat. Our learning objectives at the end of this lesson, you should be able to list the three types of aquatic habitat. You should also be able to describe the characteristics of each of the three aquatic habitats. You should also recognize some adaptive features of the plants and animals in these habitats. And you should be able to construct the food chain of the organism in various aquatic habitats. These are our learning objectives this week. Now, what is an aquatic habitat? Aquatic habitat are the habitat that relates to water. We have the three major ones, the marine habitat, the estuarine habitat, and the freshwater habitat. These are the three major types of aquatic habitat. And let's look at the marine habitat. The marine habitat is the one of the types of aquatic habitat that occupies almost 70% of the Earth's surface. So the marine habitat has salty water. It has about 3.5% of salt. It has also low concentration of dissolved nutrients like nitrate and phosphate. The marine water is highly alkaline with a pH level of about 8.2 at the surface. The marine habitat is a very large habitat. Whenever we talk about these oceans, like Atlantic Ocean, Indian Ocean, Pacific Ocean, which is the largest in the world, the Mediterranean Sea, the Dead Sea, these are different types of marine habitat. Light has the ability to penetrate in the marine habitat to the level of about 200 meters deep. The ocean water is also subjected to waves, currents, and tides in the marine habitat. These are some of the major characteristics of marine habitat. There are major ecological zones of the marine habitat, and we have four major zones that we'll be looking at today. The first one we have intertidal zone, we have neritic zone, we have oceanic zone and we have benthic zone. Intertidal zone or euphotic zone, it falls between high tide level and lower tide level. It is submerged in water at high tide level and at its lower tide is exposed to the environment. So temperature fluctuates at this zone. This zone enjoys abundance of sunlight and temperature. So hence there is high photosynthetic activities here. That's why if you look at this zone, you see some green plants here at the lower side. Why if you come down, you see light penetration. The organisms in this zone are prone to dislodgement because by moving water and they always have adaptive features or structures that enable them to survive in such environment. Even the ones that are under low tide, they have structures that will enable them to avoid desiccation. Some of them burrow into the sand or they slink to the rocks. Example of organisms that we can see here, we can see organisms like squid, snail, slug, starfish, crab, periwinkle, seaweed. So these are some of the organisms that we can see at this intertidal zone. The second one is neritic or littoral zone. This zone extends from the shoreline to the edge of the continental shelf here. So where the depth is about 200 meters. The zone is constantly underwater. And apart from here, it receives plenty of sunlight also. And is very rich in nutrients. Whenever you talk about the neritic or littoral zone, it is always the main site for commercial fish harvest. So organisms in this zone, you can see some organisms like plankton, 
seaweed, sea turtle, crayfish, tilapia fish, dolphin, etc. You see some of these organisms within this neritic zone towards the continental shelf. We have the oceanic, the oceanic zone, benthic, because they stand to have similar features based on penetration of light. Now this zone, this oceanic zone and benthic is the deep water that stretches beyond the edge of the continental shelf. Start from about 200 meters on the continental shelf there. The zone is quite unproductive. Why are these zones unproductive? Say because of the depth of this particular zone. Photosynthetic materials will not be available. Light penetration will be difficult. Photosynthesis will not be sufficient in quantity because light is unable to penetrate very deep towards this area. So organic matter from higher up in the water columns serve as the only way of our source of energy here. Examples of some animals in these zones, big fish like shark, ray, croaker, sea catfish. We can also see at this area crocodile. We can see worms. We can see bacteria. Even sea urchins. We can see them here. And let's look at the adaptations of marine organisms. What are the adaptations of marine organisms? Number one, animals on rocky shores withdraw in rocks to escape desiccation and dislodgement. Some animals in the intertidal zone have these hard and tough shells that will protect them. We have examples of such animals that withdraw to avoid dislodgement like scrubs. We have shore fishes. Why? When we talk about animals that, that have tough shells to protect their soft body parts, we have animals like periwinkle and snails. And we also have that plants in the intertidal zone have fronds that are tough and leathery, which prevent them from tearing or desiccation when the tide is low. We also have some of them to withstand pressure, wells, uh, sea, seals and turtles which live deep in the water. They have collapsible lungs and rib cages as well as flexible shells that enables them to withstand the pressure of water. Fish and other marine organisms obtain energy from the water through their gills or through their skin. Even some of them have streamlined shape it enhances speed and efficiency of movement. Example, fishes. So some of the adaptations also we can look at that many marine organisms they have dark blue gray bags which blend with the color of the environment. Some planktons they possess oil globules which act as a gas fuel external float. So you see that different organisms in different habitat that they are found that they have different adaptive features. They have different. When we talk about a food chain in a marine or a habitat. What, what would be the food chain like? We probably have phytoplankton to zooplankton, zooplankton to mackerel, mackerel to fauna. We can see that we also have example of a food, another food chain like from detritus to zooplankton, from zooplankton to crayfish, from crayfish to tilapia, from tilapia to shark. When you look at a food chain in a marine habitat, Let's look at the estuarine habitat, the adaptation of estuarine habitat. An estuarine habitat itself is a unique habitat that is being created by the mixture of two things, fresh and salt water. This mixture is always due to the tidal action in a semi-enclosed area. So the estuarine or brackish water, either we call it estuarine or we call it brackish water, is characterized by water current and salinity that varies during the day, even months and years. So basically, estuarine habitat or brackish water is intermediate between fresh water and salt water. It has a moderate salinity. So we have some adaptation of organisms there. Number one, some of the animals have body fluids almost of equal concentration as that of the surrounding water. 
the concentration of their body fluid is almost the same to that of their environment. Possession of cells which can tolerate a wide range of salinity. They also have excretion of water as fast as it enters the body immediately so that retaining of salt will be minimized in order to maintain osmotic content. They also possess very impermeable body surfaces which enables them to have a constant internal environment. Water will not be able to enter too much because of the concentration of the environment. They also undergo burrowing into the mud to escape the period of low salinity. When, they, when there is low salinity, they will always burrow inside the mud. So they possess shells in which they withdraw to escape desiccation during low tide. And again, in order to withstand wave action, binacles and muscles are firmly attached to rock. They attach themselves to rock in order to withstand wave action. Why some of the other ones they hide in rock crevices and holes. And also start, they are always firmly cemented to the root of red mangrove trees. The above plant, this street root enables them to avoid dislodgement by water. So they also plant they also possess breathing roots that we call nematophores for absorbing atmospheric nitrogen. Excretion of excess salt through the leaves to control the osmotic concentration of its cells. They excrete excess salt through the leaves in order to control the osmotic concentration of its cells. Now we have the food chain in the estuarine habitat. Here we have the producers here at diatoms. From diatoms, you have the shrimps. From shrimp, we have the fishes. From fishes, we have the birds. Why here we have a, a detritus food chain in the estuarine habitat where we have the detritus as the producer. From producer, here we have the primary consumer, secondary consumer, and tertiary consumer as birds. Now, let's look at the freshwater habitat. The freshwater habitat are inland bodies of water with little or no salt content there are two types of freshwater habitat we have the lentic freshwater habitat and we have the lotic freshwater habitat these are the two types of freshwater habitat when we talk about the lentic freshwater habitat they are always standing water bodies that are stagnant and calm these include lakes ponds pool and swamps but when we talk about lotic freshwater habitat, we are talking about flowing fresh waters that include springs, streams, and rivers. They are the ones we call lotic freshwater habitat. Adaptation of freshwater organisms. Number one, some freshwater organisms have long breathing tubes, siphons, for oxygen uptake. Example, mosquito lather and pooper. They always have these breathing tubes for oxygen uptake. Possession of streamlined body as in fish or insect larvae that provide minimum resistance to water flowing over them. We have possession of hooks or suckers which enables them to grip the substratum. Possession of hooks or suckers which enable them to stick to the substratum. They have possession of fins and gills for movement and breathing in water respectively. The fins and gills for movement. Why we have the fins for movement? We have gills for breathing in water respectively. So they possess these things. And some freshwater organisms, they have long legs. They have long legs for skating in surface water. Some plants have air bladders which aid their buoyancy in water. Why some of them possess swim bladders that make them to float in water. So you can see the different adaptive features in ways in which this organism can adapt to their environment. We have a food chain in the freshwater habitat where the agar is the producer. From the agar we have the tadpole. From the tadpole we have the fish. From the fish we have man as the tertiary consumer. 
we have here again diatoms as the producer from diatom we have copepod as primary consumer secondary consumer we have that pole tertiary consumer we have water beetles these are the different food chains that you can see in the aquatic habitat having achieved our stated objectives today which are list the three types of aquatic habitat to describe the characteristics of each habitat recognize some adaptive features of plants and animals in this habitat and also to construct a food chain of plants and animals in this habitat we will stop our lesson here today on aquatic habitats till next week stay safe thank you